Welcome to U.S. Law Shield live report from the news desk in Houston, Texas. I'm Sam Malone. Thanks for joining us on this Facebook Live broadcast. As always, we go through very hot news stories and how they relate to Second Amendment issues. And then we go to the independent program attorneys of U.S. Law Shield. Uh, have a comment, have a question, just type it in, and our producers will get it and feed it in our direction. This, uh, my goodness, this story everybody is talking about. Uh, a man in Hialeah, Florida, is accused of shooting up two, not one, but two AT&T trucks that were parked in front of his home. He told police he went bananas. Uh, the 64-year-old retired firefighter, as you uh, will see in just a second on the B-roll, uh, came outside with his three fifty-seven and started shooting. The story went global. I mean, you know, you may have a problem with the cable company, but you have to go out there with a 357 and start shooting up the place, right? It's kind of nutty. There's a lot of rules and regs involved with this because you may be a licensed gun holder. You may have your concealed carry or open carry in the state where you watch it, in, in uh, where you live. This, by the way, on the B-roll, this is the man who did it, Jorge Jove. He's the person accused. <laughs> I don't know what he accused. You see it on video. Uh, let's see. Uh, he was released from jail. Uh, two something in the morning. Yesterday, he posted his bail, his bond, and there he is walking around to the truck and taking shots at it. Let's get uh, U.S. Law Shield independent program attorney James Phillips with us via Skype to uh, join in. He is in Florida. James, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. This is a gi this is a gigantic story nationally because we got to see this via cell phone footage. Um, okay, here's the deal. He said it, he was worried the truck was blocking his driveway. It might do some damage to the driveway. It's private pro is this a private property issue? We'll start there, James. Well, not really, because uh, all the reports I read, the, the truck wasn't actually even on his property. It was blocking his property uh, driveway at one point. Of course, what's interesting, at the point where he came out and started firing the gun, the truck had already moved locations to another driveway. But being that the vehicle was, uh, the truck was parked in the road, that's a public roadway. So there's really not a private property issue since the vehicle was not actually on his property. It was on the street, the public property in front of his house. Okay. And we look at the B-roll now and you can see literally the truck is pretty much all four tires are on the street. There may be a little bit of the tire touching the brick uh, of his driveway. So the angle that it's on a public thoroughfare. You can't be shooting up trucks. <laughs> Absolutely not. He, even if it was on his property, he couldn't go out and start shooting. You know, a person can use non-deadly force to expel a trespasser, but you can't use deadly force to protect your property as far as your grass or your uh, driveway. Uh, so he, either way, whether it's on the public street or on his private property, uh, he went a little too far. All right. So how about this? How about uh, the truck is blocking his driveway? And he, I'm just, I'm throwing these out there. I don't actually em embrace these concepts, but we had a meeting and wrote all these down. He has to get to work, right? He's got to go. And it's blocking his drive. He looks around. He's like, oh, I'll just shoot at the tires. James? No, 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 and no. <laughs> you definitely can't do it. I'm, I mean, listen, we could go far fetch and try and make an argument that they're creating a false imprisonment, which is a felony, although not force, a forcible felony. But listen, even if that was a case, his reaction of getting a gun and shooting the tires, that's just not reasonable. Not only that, plus if he's trying to get away, shooting the tires is not going to help move the vehicle from his driveway. <laughs> Hang on. So, Common Sense 101, if a vehicle is blocking your driveway and you shoot out the tires, the vehicle will be sitting there much longer until they can get new tires on it. Right. And, you know, one thing that was interesting, of course, this is just based what I've read on the media is, uh, he told law enforcement they shot the uh, the tires out because he didn't want the truck to leave. So I, I'm a little confused. First he wanted it to leave. Now he doesn't want it to leave. It's it's nutty. And then, of course, now let's get to the serious side. There's a video of him now. He's shooting. He's got the revolver. Uh, this is an incredible public safety issue, okay? He's shooting at this, uh, this Ford truck, maybe a Ford F-250 or F-350. It has its blinking hazard lights on, and it's in the grill and on top. What if the bullet had, gosh forbid, deflected off of something and struck an innocent bystander and killed them? What kind of, of, of legal issues would this gentleman be facing? Oh, he would be in a whole world of hurt. 
you know, first of all, he'd be looking uh, no no less manslaughter charges. Uh, he could be facing uh, actually felony murder because him shooting into the vehicle and shooting at the vehicle is a felony. And as a result, someone died from it. He could be charged with felony murder. Uh, so he would be in a whole lot of hurt just in the criminal system. That's not even talking about the civil aspects of being sued by, you know, the family members uh, of the deceased that he uh, shot. You know, can't do it. You got to be careful. Once you shoot and that bullet leaves your firearm, you are responsible for it. Uh, by the way, Nick on Facebook says, LOL, welcome to South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. And then real quick, when uh, you, by the way, you can always leave your comments on Facebook here at uh, U.S. Law Shield. That's why we're on Facebook Live. Now, how does it vary? How does it differ, James? You have a man acting in a reckless and lawless fashion and shooting in into this truck. What if it was a self-defense issue and he's being attacked and a bullet ricochets off the truck? and strikes an innocent person down there in Florida, um, then what? How does the scenario change? Well, as far as criminal goes, if he's actually in a situation where he is forced to use deadly force and he's justified in doing so, and a bystander is hit, such as the ricochet from the bullet, Florida has what's called a transferred intent. So even though he was, justif he was justified in shooting the person, the other person that got hit, that would still fall under the justification. Now, here's the problem. That doesn't mean he doesn't get sued civilly. Right. And it doesn't mean they don't try and go after him trying to say he was reckless in, in what he did. And, of course, they're going to attack the fact that he wasn't justified in what he did in the first place. So, I mean, in any situation where someone's shot, uh, although under the law itself you may come out okay, you're still going to go through the system. Uh, you know, the cops are going to come. There's probably still going to be arrest. Uh, and even if you make it through there, you're going to uh, face tons of civil actions. On Facebook, they're, they're going to get you one way or the other. I hear you. On, uh, now, you, on Facebook Live, the conversation continues that um, imagine you're the repairman now. And let's say it's not oh. AT&T. Maybe it's Bob's plumbing, right? And Bob carries. Bob is a licensed uh, licensed to carry in the state of Florida. He has his LTC or his concealed what have you. The man is shooting into a truck. If you're Bob the plumber and you're 40 feet away and the guy is shooting at your truck, when do you get the green light to defend the property? In Texas, it's when it's dark. But what is it in Florida? Florida, you can never use deadly force to protect property unless it's in the commission of a forcible felony, such as a burglary or a robbery. And in that situation, you're not really protecting the property. You're protecting yourself. Now, if the, if the worker was in the vehicle or right there close to it, I would say he would probably have the green light because the guy is shooting at him. If he's 40 feet away and the guy's not pointing at him, then it's going to come down to whether or not the worker's actions were reasonable in shooting someone. You know, if he's in the vehicle, I think it's a pretty, pretty uh, clear, clear case of self-defense. If he's 40 feet away and the guy's not pointing him, we're going to have to deal with the whole reasonableness of his actions of deadly force. It's amazing. James Phillips, independent program attorney, U.S. Law Shield with us. So when you're that far away and you're holding up your cell phone and it's, by all intents and purposes, remember, I'm not an attorney, I'm not a cop, but from what I see, it looks like he acted in a very reasonable, calm way, the, uh, the employee of the cable company. He called and his voice is, you know, he wasn't screaming, gave address and everything. He got it on video, or somebody assisted with video, so it helps. So from the fact that he's not in direct threat, right, the guy didn't turn and point the gun on the AT&T employee, therefore, deadly force, probably no green light there. Right. He didn't huh? turn around and go, I'm, going, I'm coming after you next. Right. Because in order to use deadly force, when we're talking about forcible felonies, it still has to be reasonable use. Now, one argument can be made is, according to the media, there was another employee in the actual pod that lifts up to the, uh, the light pole. Uh, if the guy is shooting at him, wow. uh, under Florida law, you are justified in using deadly force to protect the other person. If you believe that death or great bodily harm is going to happen to him. And, and I've read a couple of reports that said when the officer got on scene, he was actually shooting up at the guy in the pot. Now, if that's the case, then the worker 40 feet away would absolutely uh, be allowed or justified in using deadly force to protect his coworker. James Phillips uh, joining us. Yeah, because Courtney on Facebook says there was a guy in the bucket uh, all right. on, the, on our Facebook live conversation. You can always type in. Could you imagine being that guy in the bucket? 
You're like, hey, I'm in a bucket. There's a guy shooting at the truck. Oh, terrible. You, you know, and I watched the video to see if I could see him. Uh, I couldn't physically see him. I, I'm assuming he ducked down into the bucket. Yes. But, yeah, if the guy is shooting into the bucket, then either the one in the bucket or the coworker would have been justified. Or even, to be honest, a complete stranger could be justified in, 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 in using deadly force to protect that worker in the bucket. Sir, thank you for joining us via Skype. Thank you. You got it.